The great man, the great man, does whatever a great man can. Can he make a comic feed? Yes, he can. He just did. Watch now a video from Great Man. A video from Great Man. Hey, welcome to my videos. Hey, I mean Great Maniacs Gather. What am I talking about? Great Maniacs Gather. Let's start that again. <laughs> Great Maniacs Gather, and welcome to another one of my videos. I'm going through box C still, uh, my Spider-Man box. We've reached Spectacular Spider-Man. So this is the first one that I bought when I started collecting. Number 59. We want Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. I recognize Beetle, Gibbon, I'm not sure who the guy in the suit is there. I'm pretty sure that's Beetle and Gibbon. And uh, then the next one I have is number 83, so quite a jump. jump. Another little jump to 96. Featuring the Black Cat, the Kingpin, the Answer, Cloak and Dagger, Silver Mane, and what the well-dressed Spider-Man is wearing this season. Number 97, Enter the Hermit. I'm not sure what point I actually started collecting them regularly. So these ones must have been ones that I have either picked up more recently or, or I bought back in the day. This one I know I bought back in the day. Pretty sure this one I must have bought back in the day as well. Let's see if I can, I can't remember the actual point when I started. This one I remember buying fairly recently. So I'm trying to find the point where I actually started collecting full time. And I can't really remember the, I can't really remember them. 103. I think these are fairly, I think these are more recent pickups as well. Right, 105. The old wasp. 106. Right, 108. This one I'm pretty sure I remember buying back in the day. So could this be where my run started? There's a gap, so yeah. 111 Puma. That's why, for some reason, Puma was destined to, or thought he was destined to kill the Beyonder. It's all very weird. Uh, 113. Okay, this one I remember getting back in the day. 116. The all new, all daring Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider Man. Pray for Sabretooth. Right, and then, where is Spider Man? Yeah, I remember this one from back in the day. It's got a bit of a um, spine roll as well. That indicates it's one of my oldest comics. <laughs> Or one of the older ones. What year is this? 1986. Yeah, so that's when I started collecting regularly, 1986. Blimey. Yeah, I knew I'd started late. It was surprising, really. I'm kind of... I've got quite a weird collection when I think about it. 119. One twenty-one. I'm not going to say all the numbers. <laughs> I don't know why I hadn't said all the numbers. It's the least interesting thing in the world just to see someone r rattling off some numbers. <laughs> okay. Blaze is back. Was he a Dazzler villain at one point? Uh, foreigner hired me to kill Spider-Man and the Black Cat, but I'm giving them a chance to make me a better offer. That's why I love this country. Everything's negotiable. Is he the guy who later got his neck broken by the foreigner? I think he might have been. I think he was in prison and the, the foreigner, pretending to be a police detective, broke his neck. The foreigner wasn't a bad villain. It was quite an interesting, intriguing villain at one point. Right, 124. No idea if he's ever shown up again or if he's one of those characters forgotten about. Right, quite a cool cover. You've got the Spider-Woman with the Wrecking Crew. Nice black cover. The Wrecking Crew are a pretty cool team of fags. Spider-Man 
sudden impact. Oh, the wrecker. The wrecker is here to wreck your day. Right, the lizards with a nice black cover, but look at the spine ticks. Spine tick city, brother! A cool cover. Negative. Whatever you call it. Negative space? Is that a negative space cover? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that counts. I'm going to find another bag for those actually because that one's a bit tatty. It's a less tatty bag. More roomy. There you go. That can do your new bag when I come round to. when I get round to repackaging you. Right. Uh, number 20, 128. Plus the black cat in her new costume. Look at that new costume and black cat there. That didn't last long, did it? That did not last long. Probably last as long as the Black Canary's costume did. <laughs> you can kind of see why it's not the best. Uh, final showdown with the foreigner. It's throttling him with his own web. And he had like a weird hypno vision as well, where he could like, he kind of like, I think if you caught his eye, he could freeze you for, like for a bit. So it made him look like he was stopping time or something. But actually, I think he just hypnotized you into thinking, or just to being like frozen for a bit, you know, a bit shadowy, like could cloud men's mind or something. But I think this might have been another couple that I got from, or at least one of these, I think I got from uh, Slot It Up. As part of the AOK -okay you gave me. One thirty three, just checking that it wasn't more than two in there. And then we have the Sin Eater. Electra has finally won. And Sinita. Stay back, Spider Man, or I'll shoot this kid. Sinita, not to be not to be confused with the full killer. <laughs> Sinita and full killer are completely different people. They're kind of reminiscent of each other. And there's the old tarantula with his poison tipped shoes. Right. At last, the sinister origin of the man called Tombstone. What is his strange connection to Joe Robertson? This issue tells all. And it's a Sal Buscema cover. Right. And rendezvous with death. It's the old Statue of Liberty again. Don't mess with the Punisher. And then we have Action in Atlanta. It's a bit precarious for the blinking tombstone to be on that blinking beam. Right, the Spectacular Spider-Man 143. You can't refuse the Persuader. Do it. Kill Spider-Man now. Death in Dallas. Alright, gotta take these out of the bag. Do bear with me, old chaps, while I take this out of its crinkly wrapper. Right, 146. What's going on? My factory is attacking me! Ned Leeds returns in Night of the Living Dead. So it's like Spider-Man's dead as well. Spider-Man's coming out of the grave. And you've got Ned Leeds. And you've got uh, Gwen Stacy. Is Ned Leeds still dead in the Spider-Man comics? Is he still actually dead? Of course, he was the Hobgoblin, the original Hobgoblin, wasn't he? Until uh, the guy who was the uh, Jack-O-Lantern killed him and took his technology. Obviously, he thought the Hobgoblin technology was better than the... Than the um, the 
jack-o'-lantern technology. I don't know, the jack-o'-lantern technology was quite good. He had his pogo platform and uh, jack-o'-lantern bombs. It's pretty much the same, pretty much the same, really. <laughs> right. Uh, what about carry on? Carry on, my sons forever. Carry on. So, a bit of man of war jumped to me a dear. Got some spine roll on these ones. If Gwen Stacy wasn't a clone, what about Carrion? I don't know. I don't know. Let's not worry about the spine roll. Right. Guilty! Oh, Joe Robertson, this court finds you guilty. Ooh. I think it was for covering up Tombstone's crimes. And he gets in prison. And look who his blinking well cellmate is practically, or his neighbour. Tombstone. That doesn't look very safe to me. And then we have werewolves. Yeah, when he was in prison, Robinson had a, a friend. I'm not saying what kind of benefits were engaged in this friendship, I don't know. But a guy called Bruiser, who was a massive fellow. I don't know if Robinson was his, was his jail bride or something. I don't know, but he was, he was sticking up for him for a bit. <laughs> and here we have Tombstone versus Bruiser. And uh, Hammerhead versus Spidey. Hammerhead versus Webhead. Puma again. Ooh, the Triumph of Tombstone. This is a period when they was advertising Spider-Man as the non-mutant superhero. The non-mutant superhero. I think they were, were, they, were they taking the mix that there's so many mutant superheroes in their comic books. Uh, his name is Banjo, and he hates it when you pick on him. B-A-N-J-O, B-A-N-J-O, B-A-N-J-O. And Banjo is his name, oh. <laughs> He's back! Him too! Together they treat Spidey to electroshock therapy. Who's the guy in the back, do you reckon? Shocker? Hmm, I don't know. Shocker and uh, Electro are kind of too, too similar, aren't they? I think Shocker's got like a vibrational element to his attacks as well, but... Uh... This is it, Spidey goes cosmic. The Trapster really chose the wrong time to pick a fight. <laughs> With greater power comes greater responsibility. Yeah, cosmic Spider-Man for a bit. He could do absolutely everything. And that's when they started proclaiming him as the non-mutant cosmic superhero. It didn't last. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he had the Captain Universe power for a bit. This bag needs replacing. I'll replace that bag. Uh, the Brothers Grimm. I like the Brothers Grimm. I thought they're pretty cool. Quite mysterious. And uh, their, their powers are kind of wacky. Their gadgets are kind of wacky. Uh, but I think they're pretty cool. There we go. This is 90s Rhino. Where they've like given them shoulder pads and extra studs and stuff like that. Uh, still didn't stop him. <laughs> Still didn't help him, rather. He still got stopped, is what I meant to say. Let's party! The Hobgoblin returns. People are always returning in these. Like Carrion's returned in this one. Versus Hobgoblin and the unliving Carrion. Together for the first fearful time. The Demon and the Dead Man. I can't remember what Carrion's powers was. Did he have like a... Uh, a touch that um, deteriorated stuff. Can't really remember. Spider Man tied up in a sewer. Nasty. That can't be hygienic. Bugged by Beetle. The Arranger must die. He's the Kingpin's uh, right-hand man, isn't he? 
He arranges whatever the kingpin tells him to arrange. It's just night and fog, is that? Yeah, I thought he'd gone to London. I had a feeling he'd gone to London. Yeah, Spidey's journey to England, only to face two fearsome new foes. It's not actually London, it's Liverpool. Those deadly lads from Liverpool, night and fog. <laughs> They just, you know, they always depict the, like Britain as being foggy, like going, like harking back to like years ago when we we had all had coal fires and uh, we never had like smoke rules kind of thing. We used to have a lot of fog in them days, like the old pea supers as we called them. And uh, but forever, Marvel was still depicting it as being an, an ongoing thing. And <laughs> we hardly ever get fog in London. We used to back in the day because it was pollution, it was smoke pollution from too many fires going off. Every house had a coal fire in them days. Um, yeah, barely get fog at all anymore, to be honest. But it uh, doesn't stop Marvel from depicting it well into the 90s. <laughs> oh dear. Or well, should I say, look, the lordy, governor! To give it the proper Marvel. Uh, <laughs> the proper Marvel English vernacular. Cool, I love a duck. There you go. Puma again. Oh, he's looking angry. The final confrontation. Was Puma not like a hero to his people or something like that? He was like a bit of a confusing villain. Don't know what he had against Spider-Man, but I think he was... Um, a Native American, um, and he was, I think he was the hero for his, his tribe, something like that, I seem to recall. Doc Ock, he's got Mary Jane in his clutches. That's no, that's not being a good villain. That's being a bad villain. Have some, have some class, Octavius. Mary Jane in mortal danger. The birth of a terrifying new villain. Spidey in all out action. Who or what is Corona? Yeah. See, they knew about it all the way back in uh, 1991. <laughs> there you go. Of course, Corona was a word long before the, the virus came along. Is it something to do with the, the sort of glow around a, a light or something? Like, isn't it, like, say, for example, the sun and then the glow all around it? Is that not the Corona? I think. And I think that's why they called it the coronavirus, because under a microscope, it looked like that kind of glow around a circle. I believe that's the case, anyway. Uh, hmm. When Craven last hunt ended... Vermin's hunt begins. One seventy nine. While a city trembles, Spider Man versus Vermin. One eighty one. One eighty five. I've got like Spider Man on my to get list, to buy list, wants list, but then I'm really not seeking them out in any you know what i mean if, if someone pop, if someone says oh i've got some spider-man comics and there's them on my list i'll go okay then you would want them for them but i'm not like going out of my way to fill out the runs so my, my buying is very haphazard quite often it's just serendipitous like i happen to see something going like the dead devils that i got the other day um just so happens that um someone you know give me a good price and i'm like well I'll, they're not particularly on my list because they're not in the the run that i'm trying to get but they're a good price and, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't mind having them. <laughs> so, OK, I bought them. So, yeah, my, my collecting is pretty haphazard. Let's just leave it at that. All right, getting to the end of this lot now. Puma again. Puma's rage. He's all the rage. Right, and then pawns of Black Crow. I'm guessing a Native American villain. Eye of the Puma. Conclusion. 
Hmm. Doesn't look like it's concluding very well for Puma, put it that way. The Death of Vermin. Poor old vermin. Tormented vermin. Right, number 207. The Shroud. The Shroud returns to stalk the spectacular Spider-Man. It's kind of hard to make that one out. At least looking at it from a distance it is anyway. Uh, ooh, Spidey has already hurt one innocent. Imagine how far he'll go to stop the scorpion. He's giving the scorpion a good old dust in there. Beating him like a red-headed stepchild. Beating him like a government mule. <laughs> right, and then lastly, a little bit of annual action. Got annual number six. It's depicting a young Metarodge there on, on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> That's just like a little joke for Roger. He was mentioning his character. Uh, before I come with what he said about him now. I think he was not amused. <laughs> and uh, number 13, Nocturne. Now strikes Nocturne. And she's got a little card inside. 1993 annuals. Nocturne, super being. Angela Ken, seven foot tall, weighs 175 pounds. Police officer Angela Ken was transformed by mutation devices into the silent, soaring Nocturne. Now freed from the prison of modern society, Nocturne seeks her destiny in the skies above Manhattan. Okay. She sounds like someone who was never seen again. <laughs> was she ever seen again? Who knows? But that was Nocturne. Oh, what's this one? I've missed one. Oh, no, I already showed that one. That's fine. Right, so that's it then. That's my spectacular Spider-Man run. I uh, hope you found it most spectacular or even grey amazing. Next one will be grey amazing or is that a amazing because I'm going through my amazing Spider-Man. There you go. That was a really bad link, wasn't it? Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, until next time, have a grey amazing day and may all your news be good news. Have a great amazing day. I'll have a great amazing day. Have a great amazing day. I hope you have a great amazing day.